Based on the legend of the heroic outlaw with roguish good looks and a healthy appetite for eating the rich and giving back to the underprivileged in his community, Focus Home Interactive brings us Hood Outlaws and Legends. Hey, I'm Rock Smash Ronin. Thank you so much for checking out this ultimate beginner's tutorial to this amazing game. I've been having a blast streaming this game on Twitch. Psst, stream link in description. Check it out. We have a lot of fun. And I've wanted to share this game with everyone. This video contains a brief overview of the game as well as a few tips and tricks for beginners just starting out. Enjoy. Though many of us grew up with the endearing vulpine version of Robin Hood that Disney gave us in 1973, Focus Home Interactive's take on the story is, well, let's just say a little more mature. Hood Outlaws and Legends is a gruesome PvPVE, or player versus player versus environment game, that pits two teams of four against each other and an AI-controlled NPC team aptly named the State. The NPC-controlled State represent the corrupt militia of the out-of-touch medieval monarchist times in which this game is set. And our goal as the selfless heroes of myth and legend is simple, steal from the rich to give to the poor. How do you do this? Well, both teams spawn in designated areas on the map, usually on opposite sides or with a bit of distance between the two starting points. From here, your team must silently, or not so silently, find the sheriff, the single most powerful NPC in the game, Oh no! who has the power to one-handedly hoist you into the air and then slam you back to earth, finishing you with a curb stop that kills you in one shot, regardless of how much HP you have. Once you've found the sheriff, you need to sneak around behind him, where he has absent-mindedly left a large, dangly golden key to the state's entire vault and treasure stash. You'd think he would have kept it in a safer spot. Once you have the key, the game tells you where the vault is located. This is your next objective. Get to the vault and open it. Because once inside the vault, you have free access to the state's entire wealth. A single chest. <laughs> well, it does jingle quite nicely with a lot of coin and has a considerable amount of heft to it. Then all you have to do is choose an extraction point on the map that becomes highlighted once the vault is open. Simply take your bounty to the extraction point, load it up on the winch, and crank your way to victory. But be careful because at any time, the opposing team can swoop in and capitalize on you having your defenses lowered. Whichever team is on the crank as the chest is loaded up into the getaway boat or over the wall is the winner. Yep, this means you can do 98% of the work of finding the key, opening the vault, pack muling the chest to the extraction, and then winching it all the way to the end and then get team killed and have the opposing team yoink your gold right out from under your very noses. Did you get all that? Here's the TLDR version. Steal the vault key, find the vault, and lastly, extract the chest. But don't worry, the game will literally remind you at the start of every match, which is super great for forgetful types like me. As of the official launch, there are four playable characters, all giving honor to specific people in the Robin Hood legend. You have the titular Robin, a ranger who is deadly at range while being a bit squishy in hand-to-hand. -hand. Marianne, a hunter assassin whose specialty is stealth and dealing swift death to guards and the state-controlled NPCs. Then there is the Friar, aka Took the Mystic, who is a versatile melee fighter that uses a deadly flail to attack while remaining out of reach. Last and certainly not least, we have a not so little John, the brawler. John's exceptional strength makes him a force to be reckoned with in hand-to-hand -hand combat. We'll go into a bit more detail on each character a bit later. Hood does a very solid job of teaching you the basics in the form of the starting tutorial. You start out as Robin, carefully eyeing the keep the source of the people's next big tax break. The tutorial carefully explains the goals of our heroes, as well as quick explanations of their strengths and weaknesses. 
While in-game, the amount of displayed information on the screen is relatively minimal, which lends to a more immersive experience in my opinion. At the bottom and in the middle of the screen, you will find your character's relevant info. The green bar on the left is your health. It is your most vital resource. When gone, guess what? You die. The next most important resource is your stamina, which is represented by the blue bar on the right. Stamina is depleted when a character attacks, evades, or blocks. And once you're out of stamina, you no longer have energy to defend yourself. Be careful. It will, however, slowly recharge if you are not running or in battle. If you are a character that carries ammo, the number of shots left until empty is displayed on top. The circle in the middle represents your character's special ability. Once fully charged, you can unleash deadly attacks. More on that later. In the bottom right, you can see your minimap. You can make it slightly less mini by pressing V on the keyboard or left on the D-pad of a controller. You can also press Tab on keyboard or the Start button on controller to open up the full screen map, which will give you access to all relevant info for this match, including capture points, locations of teammates, and more. Let's start with Robin. To attack using a ranged weapon, simply right click or left trigger and hold to start aiming. When you are ready to fire, left click or right trigger and hold to knock the arrow and draw it back. The more you draw back, the more power and therefore damage the arrow will do. Headshots on AI and players at full draw strength are one hit KOs. All characters can simply left click or right trigger while idle to perform a basic melee attack. Melee characters will, for obvious reasons, deal more damage with their basic melee attacks than their ranged counterparts. Get your character to break into a sprint, and this added momentum will allow them to pull off a heavier melee attack. For the ranged characters Robin and Marianne, you will run and then press your light attack button, either left click or right trigger. For the melee fighters, after hitting ramming speed, you will need to hit your heavy attack button either right click or right bumper. John and Took have access to heavy melee attacks while simply standing in place. Right click or right bumper to initiate hammer time or Took's extended range flail launch. If these attacks connect with an opponent, they will deal massive damage, either to health or to stamina, oftentimes stunning or knocking your opponent off balance. They do, however, leave you quite open to attacks from behind so use them wisely. By default, crouching is set to the C button or right stick. While you are crouched in bushes and the aura around your character is white, you are invisible to the state. Stealth is a major component to Hood. When you have alerted the state, your aura becomes red and you attract the attention of any NPCs around you. Portcullises in the area are lowered to prevent you from escaping. This makes progression a lot harder, so be mindful. The AI are actually very dangerous and deal a lot of damage if you're not careful. Moreover, healing options are quite limited, unless you are memeing with a bunch of Took. But more on that another time. To collect more ammo, simply move next to the open chest full of arrows. No button clicks required. As a ranged character, you can also pick up arrows or bolts from the bodies of downed enemies. Just as all roads lead to Rome, in Hood, there are many ways to reach a destination. If you are playing a ranged character, you can shoot an arrow into a rope anchor to lower a rope for you and your team to use. This can often open up shortcuts. Press the primary interact button, either A on controller or E on the keyboard, to grab the rope. Then, press the direction you want to go to climb, either up or down. You can hold shift or the sprint button and down to descend faster. Once the state is alerted and the portcullises drop, accessing different parts of the map becomes much harder. You're never truly blocked in, however, as there will always be a sneaky side door somewhere nearby, albeit a bit out of the way. Simply approach the door and press your primary interaction button to unlock and open it. Pro tip. Marianne is the quickest character at unlocking doors in this way. To silently assassinate a character, 
you must be crouched while approaching them from behind. Pressing E on keyboard or X on controller while behind will deal a killing blow. This can be done to both the state and the opposing human players. Be vigilant and always be aware of your surroundings. You might be in the middle of a face-off with the opposing team's melee fighter, only to find it was all just a big distraction while another player sneaks in from behind to take you out. This is an insanely satisfying and deadly co-op combo to pull off. Just make sure you're not on the receiving end. Killing enemies will charge your ability meter, the large blue circle in the bottom middle of your screen. Each character has a unique ability that can be used once fully charged. To use your ability, press Q or the ability button. Robin's ability allows him to fire an explosive arrow capable of taking out multiple enemies in one blast. Going back to the concept of stealth, one thing to note is that alerting the state or being highlighted in a red aura prevents you from charging your ability meter until the threat is killed or loses sight of you. Hood is a game that is best played when all players on your team are working together towards the common goal. This is best done when players communicate effectively. You can click the middle mouse button or left bumper to ping an object or a character. Characters marked in this way are visible from anywhere on the map for your entire team, and this visibility lasts for some time. This is especially helpful for keeping tabs on the enemy players. If you press and hold, you can communicate with your team in a basic way, without need for a mic. Communication is key, and sharing information with your team this way is not only beneficial, you are rewarded in small bits of experience points as well. Once you've marked the sheriff, it's time to send in the hunter, Marianne, to nab that key. Marianne's technical prowess in the shadows allows her to assassinate any NPC character from any angle. Except, of course, the sheriff, who cannot be killed. She does not have to approach guards from the back in order to deal swift and silent death. Her shroud ability allows her to move without being seen. She becomes invisible to AI, unless of course her aura was red before using the ability, and she becomes extremely hard to see by enemy players. Some abilities last only for a certain amount of time. The ability circle in the middle of your screen will show you how much time you have left. To steal the key, you will need to get behind the sheriff, then press the primary interact button to pickpocket it. You can use your abilities to disorient or knock down the sheriff, but he cannot ever be outright killed. He is always a threat. Keep your eyes out for him. Hood helps us answer the age-old question of, where do we go when we die? <laughs> well, it's quite simple, really. We respawn at one of the capture points. After getting absolutely yeeted, you will always have the option to spawn back at the starting point where the game began. However, there are special areas in each map called capture points that you can claim for your team. Oftentimes, these locations are key to getting back into the fight quicker than spawning back at the start. Simply stand within the zone long enough and you will turn it your team's color. Then you can select that zone as a spawn location in the future. Be warned, just as easily as you capture a point, the enemy team can reclaim and contest them. Be vigilant and defend your territory. Especially when playing as any character that isn't named Marianne, you'll need to be crafty with how you approach some NPCs. Since you need to be behind them to assassinate, you need them to turn their backs on you in order to slip in for the kill. To do this, use distractions. Guards will investigate footsteps and other sounds. Tapping R or right on the D-pad will make your character let out a whistle, which will draw the state towards you. If you tap and hold those buttons, you will pull out a small rock that can be thrown. The guards will investigate wherever the rock lands. This creates great opportunities for easy takedowns. Walking close to one of the many yellow boxes scattered around the map will allow you to pick up a piece of gear for your character. To use this gear, simply press the G button on keyboard or right on the D-pad to pull out your character's special piece of gear. Aim where you want to throw it, then left click or right trigger to toss it. 
Mary Ann gets a nifty smoke bomb that can mask her approach on NPCs or players. This smoke cloud also prevents players from marking you, and it clears the red aura you receive after alerting the state. This is critical in situations where you are being chased down and need to retreat. Robin gets access to a powerful and disorienting flash bomb. It explodes on contact with the ground after thrown, and if you can time it right, it will completely blind and deafen an opponent for a short time. It also completely drains an enemy player's stamina bar. Took's special tear gas bombs disperse enemies with a long-lasting noxious cloud. This immobilizes NPCs and depletes the stamina of players unfortunate enough to breathe it in. Later, as you level up this character, he can get access to a healing elixir cloud that regenerates the health of all members of your team inside the vapor. Ah, John, a true pyromaniac demolitionist. A man after my own heart. What John has chosen to stow away in gearboxes is none other than his trusty grenade. These explosive bombs will kill all targets within proximity of the blast radius, following a short fuse delay. On top of this, John's bomb is capable of bringing the sheriff to his knees incapacitating him for a short while and giving your team a chance to breathe. Once you or your team have successfully obtained the vault key, the game will tell you where the vault is. Looking to the top of your screen, you will see the general area of the vault's location. If you are the lucky key holder, you get special access to the exact location of the vault. Simply look to the bottom of your screen just above your health to see the location and what floor the vault is on. A quick glance at your map will help you determine where you need to go. Next, let's take a look at Friar Took. Took is an interesting mix of quality melee damage in both close and mid-range. His flail is nothing to sniff at. He has the stamina to perform several quick basic melee attacks, one after the other. Each attack deals damage in a wide arc in front of him. His heavy melee attacks allow him to fling his sensor straight out in front of him dealing big damage with a bit of extended range. His ability Instinct allows him to heal his own wounds as well as those of teammates near him when he uses it. On top of this, his heightened awareness and connection with nature allows him to pinpoint the exact location of enemies around him without needing to ping or mark them. Once you have opened the vault, you have access to the treasure inside. Simply walk up to the chest and press your primary interact button to scoop it up. Take note, you can restock on arrows, bolts, and gear from inside the vault. Arrows and bolts on the left, gear on the right. While carrying the chest, you actually charge your ability meter at a faster rate. The downside, however, is that you can no longer crouch to be stealthy, and walking around with a large clinking chest makes a lot of noise that the guards are going to hear if your team isn't careful. If the state catches you carrying the chest, all portcullises on the map drop in a state of high alert, further making progress to the extraction point difficult. Stay stealthy and be quick about it. Once the chest has been picked up, you will be shown the various extraction locations on your screen and on the map. Try to pick an extraction location that is advantageous for your team. Note, since this is where we spawned on this map, this extraction location is closest to our starting spawn point, meaning we will have to worry a bit less about controlling capture points. Not all maps have extraction points that are advantageous to one team. Sometimes it's a simple choice of one extraction point over another, and both are in between both teams. Thus, in this scenario, you'll have to contest the capture points to maintain the upper hand. As your movement speed is drastically reduced while carrying the chest, you'll need the help of your team to dispatch enemy guards and help ward off envious enemy players. Move as a group and watch each other's backs. Once you approach your chosen extraction location, find the cradle and gently set your booty inside. Your primary interaction button will do the job here either E on keyboard or A on controller. With the treasure chest secure in the cradle, it's time to winch it into your getaway vehicle or otherwise outside of the state's control. 
Up to two outlaws can winch to speed the process of extraction. Melee characters are faster at winching due to their big muscles. As you crank to win, be mindful of the progression bar at the top of the screen. There are certain checkpoints along the way. These are here so that the chest doesn't drop all the way back to the ground if you have to leave the winch for battle. Each checkpoint your team winches to earns you extra gold at the end of the game. Before we wrap things up, we can't forget to highlight John, the brawler. This dude packs some serious schmeat. His absolute strength allows him to excel in hand-to-hand -hand combat, hoist up heavy portcullises to allow his team to pass through, and carry the chest faster than other characters. To open a portcullis, press your primary interaction button after approaching the iron bars. Then press forward to go through, or press the interact button again to drop the portcullis and stay on the side you came from. You may need to do this if you suddenly find opposition on the other side. John's special ability, Wrath, pumps him up! After channeling all the rage that has built up from getting headshot by Robin from half a map away into his big burly muscles, he no longer needs to be concerned with his stamina bar, for it is unlimited. In this state, he has increased HP and can swing his giant mallet to his heart's content. Melee characters have the grit to withstand enemy attacks in the form of a block. Simply press and hold the spacebar or B on controller to block. Holding your guard up in this way slowly drains your stamina bar, and successfully blocking incoming damage takes a significant chunk out of it. Thus, you may only be able to successfully block a few attacks. Keep an eye on your stamina, and retreat back a ways for a breather if you're getting weary. Just as in the Soulsborne series of games, with some practice and good timing, you can do a block at just the right time to perform a parry. Parrying an incoming attack can make all the difference between winning and losing a fight. A successfully parried opponent gets knocked back and loses stamina, creating a perfect opening for finishing them off. When fighting the state NPCs, their weapons will flash white just as they are attacking, signaling to you exactly when to block to perform a parry against them. This is a skill that takes a lot of practice. Be patient with yourself. Don't get frustrated, just get good. If you are playing a melee character, one thing that may help you in a fight with an opponent, especially if you are playing Took, is the ability to lock onto them. This will fix your character's attention solely on them and help direct your attacks to where you need them to go. This is absolutely essential to do for Took's heavy melee attacks, as if you do not lock on, his flail will fly towards wherever your crosshair is aiming, forcing you to have to be very precise. If you are locked on, your flail will fly true to the enemy and hit if they are in range. Other characters would be better off pulling an evasive maneuver rather than taking the brunt of an incoming attack. Marianne and Robin perform an evasion when the spacebar or B on controller is pressed. You can input a direction at the same moment to evade in a specific direction. Usually this will be away from wherever the attacker is coming from. Evading gives your character iframes or invincibility frames. Essentially, a brief window of time during which your character cannot take any damage. You can string together a few evasive maneuvers back to back, but be warned, each evasion will eat into your stamina bar. At the end of each heist, you will hopefully have some gold to take back to your hideout. If you do, you can choose how you wish to distribute your gold on the scales of justice. Giving gold to the people will add resources to your hideout and level it up unlocking special customizations for your characters. Pocketing the gold in your own purse will allow you to spend that money on new cosmetics, perks, etc. From this central hub, you have access to the entire game. Here, you can do any of the following. Queue up a game of heist to earn gold, change your character, upgrade your outlaws with perks, weapons, and costumes, accept daily challenges for bonus rewards, or hone your skills with a character in the training area. To queue into a new game, go to the stump with the scales of justice in the middle of the hideout, 
or simply press tab or start on controller. To change your character, walk over to the robed stone statues. You can press R or the corresponding button on controller to see each character's skills in more detail. To purchase new costumes or change your character's current look, head to the clothing station next to the tanning hide and the old-fashioned log mannequin. Go to the anvil that says weapons to look at all the cool skins you can get for your character's weapons. Some of these cosmetics are unlocked with gold alone, but others need you to meet certain requirements, such as getting a certain hideout or character level, or accomplishing a certain achievement. Over at the lean-to labeled perks, you can select or purchase new perks for your character. These will be unlocked as you level up each individual character and cost 500 gold per perk. You have access to up to three perks per character per game, and each perk slot contains various perks that will affect gameplay in various ways. Mix and match until you find what works best for you. After you have explored the whole hideout, you can head to challenges and collectibles to see what your daily challenges are. Completing these nab you extra experience and gold. Under the collectibles tab, you can find some interesting lore on the game and the characters. Silently assassinating enemies on a specific map gives you a chance to pick up a trinket for that area. Gotta collect them all! Under Legends, you can unlock background story for your favorite characters by getting more and more wins while playing as them. This is also how you unlock some cosmetics. Finally, head to the back portion of the hideout to find a superbly set up training grounds. Here you can get all sorts of practice in. Hone your throwing arm by picking up some gear, Head over to the dummies in the field to practice your headshots on stationary targets. For added difficulty, shoot the hanging helmets to practice aiming at a moving target. There are melee dummies to practice hand-to-hand -hand on as well. And that is about as much as I am able to cram into this video for today. We really only got to scratch the surface in terms of what this game has to offer. Again, I've been having such a blast playing this game. It's got me back to creating content on YouTube again after many years. For future videos, I want to go into depth on specific perks and character loadouts, as well as more advanced tips and tricks for winning PvP combat and getting that fat booty. If you enjoyed the video, please gently kiss that like button. Just a little peck. You can subscribe as well, as I'll be uploading more Hood Outlaws and Legends content very soon. Hit the bell icon if you be so inclined. Also, if you want to hang out, play, and chat with me in real time, stop by my Twitch stream and drop a follow there too. Link in the description. Until next time, ya hoodlums!